Good day and welcome to Boone in the Woods and in the Home, your weekly guide to all things hunting, business strategies, and the art of curating a beautiful home. Join us as we blend the thrill of hunting and insightful business tips, learn how to create a meticulously curated home. Plus, we'll infuse our faith and scriptures to inspire and uplift you every step of the way. Let's embark on this journey together. Hello, my name is Nathaniel, and this is my wife, Lisa, and together we are the owner and operators of Boone in the Woods, a hunting farm property management business in western Kentucky, where we focus on food plots, general maintenance of our clients' hunting properties. We also specialize in food plot mixes, mineral mixes, which can also be found on BoonePodcast.com. We're also the owners and operators of Lisa Boone Designs. I'm a retailer of high-quality artisan products that can help you upcycle thrifted items or maybe things that you already have in your home. I also have lots of tutorials that I teach on my social media platforms, so be sure to follow all of the links. You can find them as well as my online shop on boonpodcast.com. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good day. So... (laughs) Last episode, we discussed a little bit about frost seeding, and so actually I was able to get out yesterday, Mm -hmm. and it's a little early somewhat, but we had some good good temperatures that where the ground was going to be frozen on top, but Mm -hmm. thawing during the day, so I got out and I frost seeded a little clover, and uh, so that's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, one thing about uh, being in this business is, you know, you got to love what you do. That's right. Because, and you know, especially with the temperature, sometimes that you have to work in. Yes. You know, which you bring, have to. brings back that old adage, you know, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So that's pretty awesome. That's so right. We definitely love doing what we do. That's right. It's the same for me. I absolutely love what I'm doing. There's no way that I would have believed if someone would have told me that this is what we would be doing. I wouldn't have believed it because it just seems like too good to be true today. We're going to go into a deep dive into biblical principles and actionable insights that redefine the essence of community in our interconnected world. Join us on a journey of connection and growth into a space where love and business intertwine. Now, is that possible? You might be thinking it is. We're going to help you to understand how to create a community that transcends the ordinary and community could be a local community, a personal community. So just think about that as we dive deep. First of all, let's discuss the significance of community. Okay. Okay. And, you know, we can look at it from a personal but mm-hmm. also in a business point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what all does that, what, what does that mean to you having a community? Well, a community um, is just a people group that you surround yourself with, that you do life with, that you do business with. You know, the father created us to be relational because he is relational and we long for relationships, whether we realize it or not, because we were not designed to be alone. So community is vital for our personal growth, our spiritual growth, and also for our business and our, our mental health, our well-being. Everything revolves around uh, love and relationship. Not necessarily meaning then exactly where you live at but it's actually right. meaning it's it's a close closer deeper meaning as far as the people that you have in your life that's so right that's real community that, that's you know, right we all live in a community but are you are you doing life with that community that's right but we are going to talk a little bit about your local community like where you actually live and how that relates to you and and what you can do for your community you to make it better it. So let's go ahead and talk about the people that you work with. You know, sometimes it is very difficult to love people, right? You don't choose the people that you work with necessarily, or maybe the people that are in your family. Um, And sometimes it's hard to love certain people. But guess what? Love is actually a choice. And so we have to find in ourselves to make the decision to love people regardless of what they might do on the outside or how we don't like them because everyone has redeeming qualities. Everyone has something that we could relate to. We're more alike than what we might realize. And so let's focus on that to bridge the gap. So what do you do when you work in a place where you don't love everyone? Well... That's hard. It is hard. That's what and, I'm saying. And it it's puts not easy. On you. It puts, yes. 
Break yes. your blood pressure up. <laughs> Believe me, Boone. We're not talking I know. from experience, are you, Mr. Boone? <laughs> well, um, it is it's not easy and it, it can cause a lot of stress. And the thing is that when we understand that we work unto him and not unto man, that also helps to bring it into perspective. I think that definitely brings uh, should bring it into a perspective for a person. Uh, look, people should look at their jobs more as a mission mm-hmm. field versus a job. Uh, it is. So versus, you know, right. it's all about, yes, we have to make a living, but at the same time, we, we're developing relationships where we can, you know, speak into people's lives. That's but at right. The same Have time, influence. People can help us as well. That you know, is exactly right. Up, which is yeah. what community is all about. That is exactly right. Um, it's important that we have to uh, build a network of people that inspire us and encourage us and sharpen us and stretch us. And sometimes those difficult people are the ones that actually do the stretching. You know, sometimes, though, I heard one of my friends had told me this a long time ago when I lived in South Carolina and I was a new Christian. Sometimes the father will frustrate you. Um you know, and he'll put people in your life and surround you that that frustrate you because you are complacent and you're sitting somewhere where you are not supposed to be sitting. And so sometimes those situations will frustrate you to propel you forward. Maybe it was to quit your job and start your own business, Mr. Boone. So so sometimes it's it's that and you have to pray. You have to seek him first and figure that out. But purposefully building a community around you of people that are like-minded that you can that sharpen you that you can sharpen is key so let's talk about building community locally so one of the things that you know we have done here recently you know uh it's really hard to get out and do things in in our community for us because we're so busy we're busy and it's a small town there's not that much here but (laughs) So one of the things, you know, a, a friend of mine that I used to work with underground, uh, he actually got uh, Hopkins County Sportsmen and Sportswomen's Club started and going. And uh, so we actually joined that club just this past month. And they are in the process of getting together uh, a convention or expo. An outdoor say, expo. An outdoor expo That's for hunting, you know, purposes. Hunting and fishing, outdoors. And so... It's a good thing in the for the community. You know, they've done some other stuff, and we'll probably mm-hmm. we'll probably at some point in time we'll talk, talk more, more about, about it. That definitely. Well. So uh, while being a part of this, well, coming into it, they were in the process of getting everything planned. So we're able to kind of help him get mm-hmm. this expo planned, help That's him out right. some paperwork and stuff like that. So yeah, because you know what? Here's the thing, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this as well, but. Everyone can't do everything and we're all gifted in different ways. And when we all come together and we use our gifts and you delegate to the right people and everyone comes on board and works together as a team, you know, the team is what makes the dream work. And so everyone using their own circle of influence and contacts is what's going to help to pull this event together. And I love that kind of stuff. I miss it. I worked for an organization here in town where I did a lot of big events and did marketing, did all kinds of stuff. And so I'm really happy being able to get back in there and put together a big event. And so, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting to help someone's vision come to life. Well, the thing, like you just said, is kind of like a choir. It takes different, uh, what's the word? Voices, Voices and you know, each person sings mm-hmm. a little bit different. Yeah, you know, and it takes create the whole a beautiful choir sound to, right. to create that beautiful sound. That's right. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and give you all of our scriptures right up front today. Um, so let's go ahead and share them. All right. Hebrews ten twenty four says, "And let us consider how to stir up one another to love good works." not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and more as you see the day drawing near. Philippians 2 and verse 3, Do nothing from selfish ambition and conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Ephesians 
4 and verse 32, it says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Like we were just saying, we, we're part of this organization now, and it's so much fun. I love to help people. That is definitely one of my biggest things. I love to help people, but especially to empower women, to encourage them and to guide them. So when I host workshops, I love that. I love to see the light bulb go off. I love to see the big smiles, the joy, especially when there's more people involved because the more people that are involved, the more excitement, the more that everyone gets stirred up with one another. Just like when I went to Carmen's a workshop in Colorado, there's this camaraderie. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's together learning new techniques and just playing with each other. And we're all essentially strangers, but we come together because we're like-minded, because we love creativity and we love learning and we love exploring and we're sharing laughs and we're, you know, ideas, we're sharing those things and we're creating together. Individual strangers, we come together for this big collaboration and, you know, the workshop evolves into a community of artisans bound by their love of creativity and meaningful connections. And it has transcended into even now, like I've met these people, I've done lives with them, I've communicated with them, I'm bouncing ideas off of them. And so witnessing the friendships that happen, that blossom when you're doing workshops or when you have a, a convention or a, oh. not conve a convention, convention, yes, or like going to the club, like and meeting new people and, and building community what together. Kind of the Outdoors Club. Oh, well, that sounded kind of weird. Oh. Going to the club. We don't oh. go to clubs. Okay. <laughs> All right. But anyway, there's something that happens, and it's like a woven tapestry. And the fab fabric of creativity, it empowers you. It builds community as we're building stunning art or, 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 or a great event that's going to benefit the community or whatever it is that we're putting together. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing thing that, that transforms you and, and, you know, you have enduring bonds. And so I'm really excited about that. So I'm just going to put a plug in here. If you're interested in, um, coming to one of my workshops to learn how to create art, let me know. Uh, I have a private group on Facebook called creative expressions with Lisa. So it, it, it enables me to get a little bit more intimate, uh, with a smaller group than on my public Facebook page, but also you can come to the store and do a workshop as well. There's just something powerful about it. And so, and not only do you help support local businesses or business people mm -hmm. or organizations, but it also does bless you as well. Well, the same thing goes with the, like the conventions you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, these outdoor conventions or expos, you know, that they're having around the United States right now. Uh, you know, you learn, you meet new people, you learn new, new, uh, about new, new items, products, new, new products techniques. Out, new yeah. Techniques. So, you know, it's good to get out and check them out. So, yeah. And we'll we, be going to mm -hmm. National Wild Turkey Federation. That's right. Uh, Just a couple of weeks. Convention here in Nashville here in a few weeks. We want to invite you as you're listening to this. I want you to take a chance, take a second and tell us your story of community building, whether it's in your business, in your workplace or your own personal life. And we want you, you to use hashtag Boone podcast community so that this way we can connect all of these stories and inspire one another. All right, let's talk about practical tips for building community. So what are some practical ways to foster love within the community? There's so many different ways. And if you have other ideas, please, again, Boone Podcast Community. Do use that hashtag and share your thoughts and your feedback. So let's go ahead and talk about first. Number one. So number one is open communication channels. Basically, we've talked about this so many times, but be open, be transparent, communicate with people in your community and be vulnerable, be transparent uh, to draw them in and use your platforms, your social media platforms, forums, newsletters uh, to keep people informed and tied in to who you are and what you are doing. Number two is create inclusive spaces yes 
Foster an environment where everyone feels welcome and valued. You never want someone to go unnoticed or feel left out. So in be inclusive and, and be intentional about that. Go out of your way to meet people, to talk to them, look at them in their eyes and draw them in. Consider diverse perspectives, you know, and actively include different voices in discussion. And so because we're all gifted differently, Everyone has a place at the table. Sometimes that means getting out of your comfort zone as well. It especially means that. So number three is organize community events. Again, that could be globally your community where you live or in the community of your friendships and your families. Organize events to bring people together because what does the father say? Gather together. Mm -hmm. And so plan events, whether it's online or in person. And it doesn't have to be 500 people. It could be two or three. Right. It's, it's your community. Where two or three are gathered. That's right. That's right. And so it could be a workshop like we've talked about here, like whether it's crafting together or cooking together, uh, making hors d'oeuvres together, um, just a local meetup mm -hmm. at a coffee shop. Breakfast, breakfast, lunches, Something prayer, simple. Bible studies. Um, one thing that we like to do when we are able to is reach out to other people, especially if you're in the business world, reach out to other businesses in your community that are doing the same thing. Have coffee, have lunch, build a relationship and pick their brain. Mm -hmm. Learn how you can help one another. It's so good to help somebody I else. Just ask a gentleman this past week to, uh, be able to sit down with him and pick his brain and maybe he's not he's not in my line of work but there's some things that I do that he that he does that he could help me with there you go so you yeah know, it doesn't absolutely. hurt even if, even if it's just kind of the of a sideline you know that's right you're never too you, to learn and you never know what that one little step will mean years down the road. Mm -hmm. You just never know the impact that it will well, for them or the, for you. Or the, the doors that can be opened exactly. just, just by a little sit down, you know. So number four is establish shared goals and encourage collaboration. Collaborations are so key. I never understood the power of collaboration until I started I'm now in my creative business doing collaborations, doing lives together with other people, doing these workshops, going to other people's, taking other people's classes. Um, sometimes it's stuff that I know how to do, but I'm, in, I'm encouraging them. I'm participating in them. I'm supporting them and I'm growing and I'm meeting new people and I'm learning different ways of doing things. But identify common goals or objectives that unite the community. So again, what, is your, what can unite your group of people? Facilitate opportunities for people to collaborate on projects or initiatives. Foster a sense of teamwork and shared accomplishment. Everyone coming together to do one thing. What is the one thing? Could it be feeding people? Could it be cleaning up your streets? Like how could you help people? Um, helping people clean up their house maybe that they're sick. Volunteer at a local business. How can I help you meet your goal? Or here in town, we have a local um, com uh, organization ministry called Breaking Bread, mm -hmm. where they feed the homeless once a month. You know, there's a lot of people. They only do it through volunteers. And mm -hmm. it's, it's an awesome ministry. We got to go to Atlanta years ago in an organization that feeds people that changed our life. We didn't get to actually feed the people. That's what we wanted to do. But we walked the streets. We got to talk to people that live in the streets or live in shelters. And we learned to treat people like people. And we had a whole bunch of shirts made like mm -hmm. that because we learned that just because they don't have a house, we shouldn't call them homeless. Right. If I don't have a car, I'm not carless. Right. And so we just learned that everyone has different situations. And they all have a story. Everybody. And they, and they are amazing stories. Oh, my gosh. It, it really changed our life. Mm -hmm. So number five is recognize and celebrate achievements. That's so important. 
the Bible talks about that. The Israelites had to stop and celebrate that all of the feasts were about celebrating what the father had done. So he wants us to celebrate, celebrate people, encourage mm-hmm. people, give them a shout out, blast it on social media. Like you go to a store and you had excellent customer service. Let like, them know. Let them know. Like so many people complain. They call the manager to complain. Mm-hmm. I will try to call a manager to praise somebody or I'll post it on on social media. It's hard sometimes because that's one thing people like, and that is good uh, business etiquette. Yes. Yeah. And so when you find it, Praise celebrate it. it. Celebrate. Pray, yes. Yes. So maybe give them a gift, an award, um, but but do something, something right. big that's outside of your comfort zone that's not for yourself, something selfless. So number six is provide support systems. Establish mm-hmm. methods for your yeah. community people to support one another. You know, that could just mean so many different things. It could involve mentorship programs, peer to peer support networks or resource sharing. You know, there's so many people I was just on a call today where they are not gifted in technology. But if you are gifted in technology and there's so many changes happening right now, there's this whole big push, whether you know it or not. And by this point, when this releases, it's going to be too late. But if you don't have a Gmail account and you're using Gmail or you're using a different platform that is has email that's coming in, your emails are not going to be effective. They're, they're actually going to... Um, be kind of quarantined. And so we had to go through this whole thing. And my friends, my ATC girls, most of us weren't sure what to do, but my friend Amanda, she knew the steps that had to get taken. And so we were able to go ahead and do that together and figure it out. So what can you do to help people um, create those systems where someone is lacking and you are strong in that area? Fill the need. Interesting. Yeah. You have to fill me in. (laughs) Number seven, regularly seek feedback. Yes. I think that's essential. Like sometimes we think we know it all. We have it all together and we don't want other people's feedback, but other people's feedback will spur ideas, will make us Mm -hmm. better. So So we we continually ask for feedback. We always ask for feedback here, but... You make fun of me because when we go out to eat, I take pictures of the food and I go ahead and I go on Yelp or I go on TripAdvisor and I give a review. And he's like, why are we going to take pictures? You know why? I don't take pictures. But he, he, he's like, wait, you know, I want to eat. No, we got to take a picture of it because it's going to help somebody else. Because I look to those reviews when, especially when we're out of town, you know, what's the food like? What does it look like? What are people saying about that food? Something simple like that and giving the great feedback is essential because that's what makes a business stronger. I sent out an email and I asked at the end of the year and I got feedback and and I'm and I'm taking that feedback and I'm incorporating it into my business plan for tutorials and, you know, communication to 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 empower people and and help them to do what they want to do. So number eight is promote shared values. So clearly define and promote the values that community upholds. You, if there's a business that you agree with that has value to you, then share that business with someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, not everyone knows what's going on in town. Uh, just actually just today, someone was looking for some work to get done. And I was able to guide them to a new business in town here. Oh, yeah. That's not totally. He's not totally open. No. But he's almost open. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, got him some uh, extra business there. Yes. Uh, so that's going to help him out. Back. If you know that if you know that someone is doing something well and you know that they're an integ- integrous person, mm-hmm. that their views align with yours and, you know, they're not shady. You want you want to, to push that. that business yeah. So number nine is an encourage participation. So actively encourage people to participate and engage in discussions, events, and community projects, just That's like right. we was talking about breaking bread. You know, That's right. you know, they're all the time looking for people to volunteer. You know, mm-hmm. and maybe in your community, maybe you have a soup kitchen or something that you can volunteer yeah. at. But even at that, maybe it's just a community event that you can help That's out right. with. You know. Yeah, Um, it's there's something about volunteering and being out in the community and the excitement, the hype, like it just, 
you know, fills you up. And what a great way to give back than to promote and engage in community events and then, or business events. As a business, you have to make it easy for people to engage. To, oh, yeah. You know, to, you know, give yes, them time. Yes, make it easy and, you know, write it down, make it plain so that they understand what the event is and what it's all about and how they can help and how, you know, what the times are. Make it clear and easy so that they know. So the number 10 is facilitate network opportunities. Right. Provide the platforms or events that facilitate networking among community members. So maybe you can host, you know, some kind of a Canva lesson. I, I just saw that actually um, the building right behind us, community commerce events place where they have lots of machinery, but now they're going to be teaching people how to use Canva. Uh, Canva is a free app where you can do marketing, but there's a paid side of it too, but it has a lot of potential and it's a huge platform. So, you know, maybe there's something that you know that you could help. Maybe it's um, helping people to write business plans or how to fill out an application for a job. Resumes. Resumes. You know, we, we did a class on that one time. We did, and I loved that. Or h helping people interview. You know, what can you do to provide a service for people that need to grow and learn? Number 11, provide learning resources. Again, <laughs> just, we just yeah. talked about that. You yeah. know, we offer educational resources, workshops that empower people with knowledge and skills, and then that way, you know, learning together, of course, strengthens that's that right. community bond. That's right. You know, regardless of whether it's resumes or applications. Whatever know, it, it is. Whatever it is, you know, it, bringing people together and doing things in a community sort of way just mm -hmm. makes a bond and makes mm -hmm. a family. That's right. So number 12, establish clear guidelines, clearly communicate community guidelines and expectations. This is what we're talking about. Make it easy. Uh, it ensures positive and respectful atmosphere within the community and it helps to grow. So, you know, communities that want to be bigger and better, it starts inside. It starts small, little steps of kindness, random acts of kindness and helping one another is what makes a great community. Number 13 is celebrate diversity. Now, celebrate diversity. We're not talking about skin color, right? We're about the same color, same. but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about communicate with people that are outside of your realm, that are outside of maybe the people that you have inside of your in your circle of influence be inclusive invite people that are not like you that don't think like you that maybe maybe they don't look like you but that fostering that strong sense of community is so powerful and making people feel wanted and needed it opens your heart it opens their heart and it opens the door for so much more. Who knows how much you could learn. Exactly. Embrace and celebrate the diversity in your community. And again, this goes beyond skin color because we're all made in his image. We were all made one race, the human race. So include people from different backgrounds and different perspectives because then you get a broader scope of, you know, what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. And sometimes it could be easier than what you realize. Number 14 is promote community spirit. Instill a sense of community pride and identity, like encourage people to love their community. That is hard. That is hard. I'm just saying it's not easy, but do it anyway. Develop slogans like he's develop rituals develop, that reinforce community spirit. So here in Madisonville, their slogan is the, the best town on earth. Best town on earth. You well, know. we're not the best town on earth, but we could be the best town on earth. And it takes every individual doing those random acts their of part. kindness and doing their part to make it the best town on earth. Just, well, just even businesses. That's right. You know, do, it do starts small. It starts small. All right. Number 15 is adapt and grow. Be flexible and adaptive to the changing needs of your community because, you know, that's something that it, it doesn't stay the same. That's why we you talked know. about some of that so much. Change. Know, There's change, always change. You know.
communities are growing, people are getting older. That's right. Other people in your community may need more help than others. Yeah, things evolve and, you know, you have to meet the expectations of those around you. Step up, be a good steward, Mm -hmm. be a good leader. So in closing, um, we hope that you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for listening. We hope that you will spread this to other people. Um, You can watch or listen on boonpodcast.com. So thank you again for joining us today. Be sure to listen every Monday at 4 p.m. on 103.5 The Light. And again, also all of our podcasts are located at boonpodcast.com. Be sure to follow us on social media. We have all kinds of different platforms for both of our businesses, and you can link to those from boonpodcast.com. Thank you again for listening. We hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Good day. Ciao.